Pen BBS 355 is a mostly cylindrical fountain pen with flat top and bottom finials. It's primarily made out of acrylic that's available in multiple finishes as well as uh, chrome accents. The top cap has a clip that's extremely functional and usable. It features Pen BBS's standard sword style clip. It unscrews in one and a half turns. The cap says Pen BBS 355. The cap does post securely, however, it makes the pen extremely long and back weighted, so I would not consider this a good pen for posting. Moving up on the pen, we have a standard pen BBS stainless steel nib, black plastic feed, a section that's extremely comfortable, matching the same acrylic as the rest of the pen, and then we have our barrel that includes the filling mechanism. Again, this is considered a bulk filler. If you look closely right here, we have a safety valve that shuts off the section from the rest of the barrel. Um, this is very useful, especially for such a large capacity ink, prevents burping, as well as extreme ink spillage when you go on airplanes. So for long writing sessions, you will want to unscrew the back of this blind cap to allow ink to flow through from the barrel to the section and the nib. In order to fill this pen, you pull the rod all the way back, continuing to unscrew, and in this case, it's a reverse thread in. We now have the piston engaged with the piston rod, so you can move it up and down freely. At this point, you would submerge the pen into ink and slowly draw it up. Now at the back of the barrel, there is a bayonet style locking mechanism that you engage by rotating clockwise. And as you continue to rotate clockwise, you will release the, uh, the piston. You can slide that back down. Doing this, this motion, it's important to note you are displacing some volume so you will most likely see some ink spilling out of the nib. And then to seal it off, again, you just rotate piston knob clockwise. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Pen BBS 355 compared with a Pilot G2 Rollerball pen and your standard Sharpie. Okay, here we have Pen BBS 355 in two different finishes. This top one is called Galaxy, and this lower one is called Infinite. Let's take a look at the Galaxy a little bit closer. This is one of the most popular acrylics that Pen BBS carries. It is quite a beautiful acrylic. Lots of deep blues and light silver flakes, swirls and chatoyancy. It's very fun to look at and to uh, rotate in your hand. The only real issue I have with this acrylic on this specific model is the ink capacity is so large that it's almost critical to know what level you're at, um, especially if you're taking this on a trip. And also the filling mechanism is not the simplest one to operate and adding that it's a blind operation just makes it even more challenging. The Infinite, on the other hand, is um, a nice variation on that blue that we saw in the Galaxy. This one is quite transparent, so filling it, seeing the ink level, is um, not an issue. Okay, disassembling the Pen BBS 355. You don't need any special tools, just a wrench. So let's go ahead and get started. The cap unscrews from the rest of the pen. If you wanna disassemble the cap for deep cleaning, the finial unscrews. A 
underneath the finial is a little metal washer. We have our clip and the rest of our cap. The section unscrews from the rest of the pen. There is an O-ring at the bottom here. I like to put some silicone grease on that just to help with sealing. And then if you want to disassemble the nib unit, that just unscrews as well. Here, this is your standard pen BBS nib and feed unit with a, a collar. At the top and bottom of the collar are two O-rings that I like to put silicone grease on. The nib and feed just pull right out. To disassemble the rest of the body, unscrew the piston knob. At the bottom of the piston knob, there's these threads that have two flats. Those flats are used to grab a hold of a wrench. Give that a twist and it'll pull right out. And then the entire filling mechanism pulls out. At this point, you have an empty barrel and you have your filling mechanism, which we can look at a little bit more closely. Uh, you have a pretty hefty piston you have a collar here that has four nubs that line up with this nut uh, that has the bayonet style hooks. So you can see how that kind of grabs a hold. And now you have PEM BBS 355 fully disassembled. To reassemble the PEM BBS 355, we'll start with our barrel and our filling mechanism. Filling mechanism slides right in and then we're gonna screw this nut in place. Use a wrench to uh, make sure that it's tight and then you can screw the piston knob all the way down. Section then screws back into the butt pen body. To reassemble the nib, feet, and collar Again, the nib lines up nicely with the feed. That rib stops it from going too, from sliding too far down the feed. Those slide right into the collar, and then the collar screws onto the rest of the pen body. Lastly, we have our cap. If you look closely at the cap, on the top there is a groove. That groove is where the clip seats. See if I can get it to just stay there. We have our washer and our finial. That screws right on top. And then the whole cap gets put back onto the pen. And now we're ready to ink it up. Okay, inking up the pen BBS 355. Here we're going to use a Roshizuku Asagao. It's a nice purple ink that complements the infinite material on this model. As you can see, we already have the piston rod fully engaged at the bottom of the pen. So we'll uncap it. And ink it up. Okay, to start off, unscrew the piston knob. Submerge the pen into the ink. Pulling the piston rod slowly will bring ink into the pen. And then turning clockwise will engage the bayonet lock and disengage the piston rod from the piston. And then we'll bring the piston rod down, displacing some ink out of the nip in doing so. And there you have it. Wipe off the excess ink.
ready to write. Writing with the PEM BBS 355 cap unscrews. You also want to unscrew the blind cap to release the shutoff valve and allow ink to flow between the barrel and the feed. This model or this finish is called Infinite. Our ink. Roshizuku Asagao. And the nib is what Pen BBS calls a standard fine. Now let's take a look at this nib a little bit closer. First of all, it's a number six size steel nib that's easily swappable with any other standard number six size nibs. The tipping material actually has a little bit of an upturn. This style of tipping material is also called mini fude. And what that allows you to do is have some variation on the line thickness based on the angle at which you're holding the pen. So let me show you that right now. I'm gonna do some strokes at a low writing angle. Strokes at a normal writing angle. See, there isn't too much of a difference there. At a high writing angle, suddenly you see the thickness of the line has um, reduced quite dramatically. And then in reverse, we have an even thinner line stroke. Actually, this nib is one of the best reverse writers that I have. And the amount of versatility that you have in being able to do thick and extra thin line strokes is quite remarkable. So what do I think of the PEMBBS 355? In the hand, it's very ergonomic and comfortable. I do wish that it posted a little bit better, but this pen has a lot going for it. And I would argue this is perhaps one of the best pens for long distance travel. Not only does it have a really large ink capacity, but it also has that shut off valve that helps prevent uh, ink spilling at high altitude and high pressure differences. So that just leaves me to say, thank you for watching.